More confirmation hearings took place this week, and Bernie Sanders did what he always does best, and that is scrutinize the hell out of people and call them out on their bullshit when it's necessary for him to do so. So when it comes to Tom Price, who Donald Trump wants to be the leader of the Health and Human Services Department, well, Bernie Sanders asked him point blank, is Donald Trump going to hold his promise to the American people? Congressman Price, a very simple question. Is the president-elect, Mr. Trump, going to keep his word to the American people and not cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, or did he lie to the American people? Uh, I, have, I haven't had extensive discussions with him about the uh, comments that he made, but I have no reason to believe that, uh, that he's changed his position. So you're meaning to tell me that in the process of Donald Trump asking you to be his uh, HHS secretary, he didn't talk to you about health care, Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, nothing? I think that answer is a cop-out, and it's so frustrating to me uh, that Bernie Sanders didn't have more time to kind of push him on this issue. Now, Bernie Sanders also asked him whether or not he thought health care was a right, and his response was really frustrating. The United States of America is the only major country on earth that does not guarantee health care to all people as a right. Canada does it, every major country in Europe does it. Do you believe that health care is a right of all Americans, whether they're rich or they're poor? Should people, because they are Americans, be able to go to the doctor when they need to, be able to go into a hospital because they are Americans? Yes, we're a compassionate society. No, we're not a compassionate society. In terms of our relationship to poor and working people, our record is worse than virtually any other country on earth. We have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any other major country on earth, and half of our senior older workers have nothing set aside for retirement. So I don't think compared to other countries we are particularly compassionate. But my question is, in Canada, in other countries, all people have the right to get health care. Do you believe we should move in that direction? If you want to talk about other health countries' health care systems, there are consequences to the decisions that they've made, just as there are consequences to the decisions that we've made. I believe and I look forward to working with you to make certain that every single American has access to the highest quality care and coverage that is possible. Has access to does not mean that they are guaranteed health care. I have access to buying a $10 million home. I don't have the money to do that. And that's why the, the, we, we, we believe it's appropriate to put in place a system that gives every person the financial feasibility to be able to purchase the coverage that they want for themselves and for their family. Again, not what the government forces them to buy. Yeah, but if they don't have any, well, that's a longer story. Thank you very much. Thank you. Basically, he tried to espouse uh, platitudes. He's like, we're a compassionate society, and Bernie Sanders shut him down immediately because we're not a compassionate society. You don't say we're a compassionate society because the people who go bankrupt or die due to lack of health care coverage, they wouldn't call us a compassionate society. And when you look at the fact that we're the only major modern nation who doesn't offer health care to all citizens, no, we're not a compassionate society. And that's not even getting to the war issue. But also, he said, if you want to talk about other countries' health care systems, there are consequences to the decisions they made, just as there are consequences to the decisions we've made. Right. The consequences in Canada, for example, is that if you have a medical emergency, you don't go bankrupt and you don't die. Whereas in the United States, if you don't have insurance and you have a medical emergency, you do either go bankrupt or you die. That's the consequences. Now, what he's really implying here is that, well, people die in Canada because they wait so long. I've heard this from uh, Republicans before. It's bullshit. Yeah, you might have to wait longer in Canada if you don't have a medical emergency, but you will get seen. You will get health care. It's guaranteed. So uh, I'm okay with Canada prioritizing people who are more sick and moving them up on the schedule, but I'm not okay with anyone dying. See? So you can't wiggle your way out, which is what he wanted to do with this question, and try to pretend like you're in favor of health care when you really aren't. Now, he brought up access to health care, and Bernie Sanders correctly stated, well, I have access to buying a million dollar house, but I don't have the money to do that. So, I mean, Bernie Sanders gave him no wiggle room to obfuscate here, which is what he really wanted to do. He wanted to dodge the question, and he was really uncomfortable. Uh, but I'm really glad that Bernie Sanders called him out and really pressured him on this topic because it showed to us 
that this guy is not fit to lead the HHS. And really, Tom Price has no business being in charge of any department of government because during his tenure in the House, he's demonstrated that he's overtly corrupt. So Slate explains how he's corrupt in a number of ways. So first, the congressman has a habit of trading stocks in medical companies while also writing legislation that could sway those firms' fortunes. The Wall Street Journal recently found that Price had bought and sold stock in about 40 healthcare, pharmaceutical, and biomedical companies since 2012, including a dozen in the current congressional session. In total, he traded shares worth $300,000. Price, a former orthopedic surgeon who now chairs the extremely powerful House Budget Committee, regularly introduces bills on health care policy and sits on the House subcommittee that oversees Medicare. Second, his investments have included at least one very nice bargain. In 2015, Price bought discounted stock in a small Australian biotech firm, Innate Immuno, that was attempting to win Food and Drug Administration approval for a new multiple sclerosis drug. Price purchased the stock in a private offering marketed only to sophisticated U.S. investors that Kaiser Health News referred to as a sweetheart deal. To be fair, all U.S. buyers received a 12% discount on their shares, which is reportedly standard in such a private placement. However, the stock price was also rising fast. Price has notched a 400% gain on the investment, Kaiser notes. Finally, as CNN reported this weekend, Price introduced a bill that would assist a major medical device maker less than a week after investing in it. Price bought between $1,001 and $15,000 in Zimmer Biomed, which manufactures products like knee and hip replacement parts. Within days, he introduced the HIP Act, which would have delayed a new Obama administration regulation that may have crimped Zimmer Biomed's profits by changing the way Medicare paid for hip and knee replacement surgeries. So he's overtly corrupt, and brazenly so. He makes no attempt to hide his corruption. So this guy should be in jail right now. He shouldn't be leading a government department. But this is the state of American politics. We have someone who is brazenly corrupt, who invests in companies and then literally proposes legislation to help them so that way he profits from that. He might lead the Department of Health and Human Services. It's disgusting. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.